Chelsea Football Club lose to Newcastle and the meltdown, I'm telling you, is worse than when we had Pochettino. Players get, are getting blamed. Joao Felix is the face and the poster child of this defeat. Enzo Fernandez isn't good enough and people are absolutely having a meltdown. I'm here to calm your nerves. I'm here to analyze what happened and I'm here to tell you it's going to be fine. People are talking about people getting divorced like it's any of our business. We need to care about Chelsea Football Club and and the way individuals play. As you can see, I'm in Morocco. I'm having the time of my life, but I took time in first thing in the morning after breakfast before I go and hit the pool at my all-inclusive resort to talk to you lot about this. So before we get started, and since you guys are disrupting my holiday, even though I love it doing this, hit that like button, a thousand likes goes a long way. Subscribe to the channel. You still will be getting football-related content. However, it won't be as high quality in terms of production as it normally is. So let's get started. Let's talk about it. Let's go. All right. So I'm going to talk about Joao Felix first. I'm going to talk about Enzo Fernandez, and then I'm going to talk about the all-in-all -all season that Chelsea have had so far. Because I think we need to nip the bud on the head or whatever the expression is. Joao Felix. Let me tell you what Joao Felix is, and then you can judge him. In my opinion, Joao Felix is the backup to Nicholas Jackson and Cole Palmer. He was acquired if. Nicholas Jackson or Cole Palmer get injured that he is going to be the replacement in their position. So what does that mean? It means he basically has no chance of playing consistently unless they get injured because Cole Palmer if we're losing will play 90 minutes as he should because of the reputation he's earned, the performances he's put up and how good of a player he has been for us. Nicholas Jackson, he's competing directly with Christopher Nkunku and more importantly he's performing well. So guess what? This guy is not going to be dropped either. Now we need to talk about Joao Felix. Joao Felix is a player that attempts things. He takes shots from far away. He's a high volume shooter. And what ends up happening when you're a high volume shooter is if it doesn't go in, the fans get super frustrated. Fans get annoyed and they start venting. Totally understand. However, against Newcastle, Joao Felix had a good game. You can't persuade me otherwise. Apart from his finishing, and his end product, right, where the, the shot did not contribute to a goal. He created chances, he absolutely ripped players to shreds, he, he broke up the deep block, he was setting people up, his shots were blocked on the line, he had one where he should have went around the goalkeeper, and guess what happened? He became the poster boy for the defeat, when really the defeat wasn't due to our attack. Yes, we didn't score, but we created chances. The defeat was due to Benoit Badiashile playing a hospital pass to Renato Vega, and Renato Vega not just booting it into Rose Z. He was fouled, in my opinion. And secondly, we gave away a set piece, short free kick, the whole team fell asleep, cross comes in that's deflected, De Sassi can't fix his feet. And then we can see 2-0 and all of a sudden we're in control of the game for the remainder of the game. And I break this down for you guys straight after the match where I'm frustrated with the number of changes, but not that the, there were changes done. But now back to Joao Felix. You, what you don't need to understand is Felix played the least amount of minutes out of all of our attackers this year. Noni has played more than him, Neto has played more than him, Palma has played more than him, Jackson has played more than him, Sancho has played more than him, Nkunku has played more than him. So why is the player with the least number of minutes with three goals the one to be blamed when we lose? Because people have expectations that aren't realistic. Ballon d'Or Joao Felix is gone. As much as I think he is good and he could be absolutely amazing, he's never going to be Cole Palmer's level. He is not. He won't get the minutes to display himself and we've seen that he's production wise and just not of that caliber. However, what he is good enough is he can contribute to this team and if needed, he can step up and play valuable minutes and pitch in with good goals. You cannot call a player rubbish and then be as furious as people have been for Joao Felix's performance when in my opinion it wasn't even that poor. There were players that were far worse than him on that pitch and if anything him, Mudrik and Kukurea were the only ones that could leave that pitch with their heads held high. People are being far too critical for far too little of things. Now on to Enzo Fernandez. Enzo Fernandez has been a hundred million pound signing that has not gone well. 
I've got a new announcement. I don't want Chelsea making any signings more than 80 million from now on. Because the fan base doesn't know how to handle it. The fan base put expectations on the player of that value. Meaning you paid 100 million for a player. Meaning you need to perform like a 100 million pound player from day one. They don't take context into the fact. They don't take that. Before he came to Chelsea, he was only in Europe for six months. Before he came, when he came to Chelsea, he's had four managers since then. Everybody is not giving him a stable environment to grow. And different people react in different ways. And evidently, Enzo Fernandez is not reacting in that way. Furthermore, they are humans. We don't know what's going on behind closed doors. With Enzo, it's come out something about his divorce. We've got people making YouTube channel videos on it. It's talking about the ramifications as if they're marriage counselors. For me, we're not doing that here. We don't need to. What we can focus on is tangible goods that we can quantify and what we can see. Enzo's performances have not been good. Enzo, there's a standard that you need to meet that Renato Vega does not need to meet because you're Enzo Fernandez. And the problem for me is you've not been meeting it. And if you have not been meeting it, you will get called out. It's as simple as that. It's the harsh truth. It's the reality that you are faced with by being Enzo Fernandez and getting the money that you get. However, people have crossed the line. People are calling him overweight, unable to contribute anything, rubbish, not good enough for the championship. And when you go to extremes of that extent, what ends up happening is I get defensive because I think you're being out of order, you're doing too much, and it's the same as what people did with uh, Nicholas Jackson last year and Moises Caicedo. Players will not want to come to Chelsea if you keep treating your existing players like this. Enzo Fernandez is a very talented player. If Enzo wasn't in the Chelsea kit, you all would be saying we need a player like this. You all were, were saying this with Joao Felix. You all were saying this with Pedro Neto. You all were saying this with these players. And now they come in because they aren't putting up the numbers you want. You start panicking. You start absolutely calling these players out. You call them names and you be absolutely horrible. And for me, this needs to stop immediately. Enzo is our third choice midfielder based on merit. Lavia starts, Caicedo is the other one. Enzo will be coming off the bench. Leave the player alone. It is getting toxic. It reminds me of Jorginho. It reminds me of Kai Havertz. And I don't like it. Please stop. I've seen tweets about Andre Santos. Andre Santos will get eaten up at Chelsea 100%. The minute he puts up a bad performance, people are going to turn on him the way they've turned on Enzo, the way they turn on Caicedo, the way they turn on Jackson, the way they turn on Neto, the way they turn on Felix. This needs to stop. The fact that I have to come and rant here and explain to you guys this is crazy. I'm not saying don't critique the way they've played. But I'm saying don't go over the top. Let me give you a quick explanation of what this season has been so far. We're comfortably performing in the Conference League as we should. We are five points away from being top, but we are comfortably in a good position to make top four football this year. We are absolutely one point behind Arsenal. We're one point behind um, Aston Villa. And we are really putting up a good run. Let's go to Manchester United, win that game. We are out the Carabao Cup. Enzo Maresca made a mistake. There were too many changes. I pray he learns from this and we develop. Now I'm gonna go back to the beach. I'm gonna have myself a pina colada and then maybe a double rum and coke and just chill and enjoy myself. I will be doing a match preview. It will be coming out tomorrow, but I'll be recording it tonight to make sure you don't still get some content. But it is what it is. Hit that like button, subscribe to the channel. If you did enjoy this and you wanna go back and watch the match reaction from the Newcastle game, go do it. Subscribe to the channel. Let me know your thoughts. Peace out, I'm out. Have a lovely day.